Hello everyone! This is Loopy Liss and welcome back to Planet Zoo where we are making another habitat today. We are going to be focusing on the Western Lowland Gorilla today. Now remember, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and maybe even subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any more Planet Zoo content by me because it's going to be going up regularly because I absolutely love this game and I don't think the love is going to die down anytime soon or ever, really. But yes, with this habitat we are attempting a little viewing area. Now. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that I am not a master builder at this game yet. But I'm sure that goes for some of us, that, well, a lot of us really as well. I mean, no one plays a game and is just instantly a pro gamer. Some people have started on Planet Coaster and now they're pros because, you know, Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster use the same kind of uh, construction building uh, sort of thing. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good for the ones that follow me here that aren't pro builders as well because you get to see what I'm doing and if you like what I'm doing and how simple it is and you think you can replicate it, then it's all good, isn't it? It gives you a little bit of ideas for like um, for what you can do as well because obviously I, I am literally not a good builder. I, <laughs> I am trying right here. I am really trying to make this look okay. At the very least, I'm making this look okay, and that's fine. That is literally fine. But I did it did take a bit of doing to kind of make it all kind of go together a little bit, put it at the right height and such. But I, I get that, I get that. Anywho, it is time for a fun fact about Western Lowland Gorillas. Did you know that the intimidating, chest-beating charge of a male gorilla is usually a bluff to scare off intruders while the rest of his band disappear into the forest? Yes. However, it is also used in play as well, so it's not all aggression to bluff their way out into safety. It is to play as well, so if you do see them, maybe you see them in game or you see them in zoos and they puff it out their chest and they're banging and then they're just having a bit of fun, unless they've got another male in the exhibit, then it might be for dominance, you never know, that's an also another thing that could happen. They could do it for dominance as well. Oh yeah, by the way, fun fact, my game totally crashed while I was making this habitat. It just completely froze and I have no idea why. So I had to backtrack a little bit, so that's why you saw that little cut there. But uh, it's all good, I didn't lose too much progress luckily, luckily it was um, it was just a little bit of rock placement that I missed out on that you'll see very soon. I'm surrounding this habitat with um, uh, tropical rocks, of course, and also the um, the stand by there is going to be surrounded as well. Not all the way to the top, but that's fine. Um, one bit of advice I would give, don't follow my example and use the exact same rock all the way around. It is okay, and I am spinning them around to make it look like it's a different rock every so often, but it will look better and prettier if you do use different rocks. The only reason I kind of got lazy and used the same rock all around is because I had to do this twice because of the game crash. Oh, I was so gutted. I thought I'd lost everything. Like, I worked, I worked hard on that very simple viewing point. And I really didn't want to lose that. But luckily, everything was okay. And it was still there. So I didn't have to completely restart. So that's good news. So another fact for you all, wild gorillas are actually difficult to study because they are shy, secretive inhabitants of densely vegetated tropical forests. Now with, particularly with my habitat, I didn't want it to be completely crowded because obviously it's in a zoo and the, the you definitely want your visitors of the zoo to be able to see the animals clearly. Now I, this will help with like climbing platforms that you put up. You'll notice that a bit later on that I do make some climbing platforms right up near the viewing area. Um, but I I feel like on the ground as well, they spent quite a lot of time on the ground when I was watching them for some reason. Then I figured out that they couldn't quite make it up on one part and I fixed it and then they started traveling everywhere. But um, they did spend a lot of time on the ground anyway after that. And um, yeah, they were just kind of chilling down there. They were enjoying themselves down there. So it was good that I left it quite clear when it comes to the vegetation, really. I didn't leave it too clear, obviously. 
I, I I did put trees in here. It's not <laughs> it's not a treeless habitat. That would be strange. But I did make sure that there was enough um, ground space for the visitors to be able to see into the habitat enough, if you know what I mean. Okay, yeah, another piece of advice I'm going to give you. When placing trees or vegetation down in a habitat, even if you filtered it to show the correct items, or so you think, these vines, yes, these vines right here, I thought they were suitable. I thought they looked great as well. But then, no, they're actually not meant for this animal. They don't, it's not accurate. It's the wrong, it's the wrong place. And I was really confused because I filtered it. You can see right there that I filtered it to, I think it's Africa and Tropical is blurry on my screen right now. But yeah, it was filtered and it showed this up. And I was very confused when I clicked the gorilla a little bit later on and it's not suitable for them. You probably see it in a sec right there. Yep, there it is. Yep, you see the red on there? I see that in a moment and I have to rip them all down. <laughs> I mean, it probably would have been fine. The plants are showing as green um, at the top of the bar right there. But it, I didn't like that it was the wrong plant, so I did take it away. It was a shame. It is a shame. And yeah, it, in normal stances, in normal, normal instances rather, English, um, I would probably, or people would probably not include the building completely in a habitat boundaries, but I have to allow for it to be a bit easier to upload to the workshop. You see, I'm removing them now. So if I had left the um, building out of the habitat boundaries, then I wouldn't have had a problem. It wouldn't have showed and I would be none the wiser, but I knew and so they got ripped down, which is a bit of a shame because I really liked how they looked. <laughs> But you know, you can't have all you want, you can't have everything that you want, it's just not how the world works. <laughs> Here's another little fact. During the early weeks, a newborn gorilla is clutched belly to belly for close contact until it develops the strength and coordination to cling onto its mother's back here at about two months old. So up until two months old, they will be firmly against the belly. After that, when they gain the strength up, they will be on the back here. They will be holding on there, and I believe that's called the dorsal here? I might be wrong with that, but I think it's either just dorsal or it's dorsal, dorsal here. It might just be dorsal, no hair included on that, but it is the back here, basically. Okay, we are working on the climbing parts now. Now, I'm not a magician when it comes to building. I've said this before. We, we all know this. We've seen my videos. I am great with habitat, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but I am poor with building still at the moment. But that's okay. That's fine. I'm doing what I can. And I think this works out pretty well, actually. And they, are, they do use it. They do use it. I don't have enough footage of them going onto the um, highest platforms, which is a bit of a shame. Because they were just, I guess they were just feeling a bit lazy and they didn't really want to go all the way along. But <laughs> but they, they did use it and I was really happy about that because I worked hard on uh, making sure that uh, it was really close up to the viewing area. So the visitors uh, looking down would be able to see see the gorillas up, up close and personal while they're up there, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it worked out pretty well. I could have done a bit more to it, but overall I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Remember to let me know if you think I could have done anything better, by the way. Because I am a very big fan of feedback, as usual. Because it, do it does help me improve for future videos. I mean, everyone likes a bit of criticism. Nice feedback, good feedback, bad feedback. It's all good. It's all relevant and it's all good advice. So it is always welcome in my comments. So here we are. We're just placing the last few bits down and then we get to see the gorillas. So that's exciting. And here they are! I am so happy to be housing three gorillas at the moment. Just the three. It will be more very soon, I'm sure. But they are using the climbing, which is amazing. They're walking a bit weirdly, I'm sure it's because of a little stump. I'll have to adjust that, maybe. But yes, they're very happy and content, and that makes me happy and content. So, yeah, of course, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make this. This will be available on the workshop, so check the description for the link down there that, and you'll be able to see all the other habitats that are downloaded down there as well but with that 
thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share this video, I'd really appreciate that too. And I will see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.